Call the meeting to order. Roll call of aldermen. Eisler? Here. Kinsella? Here. Meyer? Here. Falk? Here. Anderson? Here. Rajewicz? Here. Carpenter? Here. Hart? Here. Selsby? Here. Hayden? Here. Seiber? Here. Martinson? Here. Elmore? Schneider? Here. Musgrove? Here. Arlen? Alderman Elmore and Alderman Harlan are excused. Uh, Alderman uh, Elmore, unfortunately, has, is gone because of the death of his father-in-law. And um, we, we uh, wanted to share that with you all in case they didn't know that. Um, roll call of uh, department heads, please. Police Chief Clyde. Our Chief Langston. Here. Mike Flynn. Here. Ken Vaughn. Here. Doris Carlisle. Jamie Matrix? Here. Tim Gregwitz? Here. Jim Schneider? Here. Leanne Spearman? Here. Emily Polk? Here. Chuck Schaefer? Here. Bob Sable? Here. Royce Carlisle, Chief Clay, and Tim Gregowitz are excused. Uh, this time, would you please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic. Discriminate against people. 
and you want to take their property rights away. Thank you. I'm going to address we did last meeting um, entertain the duplex and when it came to my attention when Emily went back and re-looked re, re at it no, you sit down sir sit down I had the floor, you had your three minutes Okay, don't you expect me not to say anything. I, I'm expecting you to sit down and be civil. Your time is up tonight. And we admitted that there was a mistake made. And that's why tonight we're, Emily has made it clear to this person we funded their money, and we have done this. We're not saying mistakes are ever not made. There, in this particular case, there was a communication mistake. And Emily and Mr. Flynn's office spoke. They brought it to me. I agree. We made a mistake. We're not afraid to say when we make a mistake. But we've not stolen any property. Any property that's been used to the city has been done so in court. And, and um, I don't appreciate those comments, but so much for that. But I just want to clarify. In this particular case, Mr. Brown, you happen to be correct. We acknowledge that. We fixed it. It was a mistake. And the duplex, he has the situation. Uh, he knows now what he can do and how he can proceed. He's been refunded his, his, his fee for the zoning application variance. And that is all a matter of fact. So there's nothing else really to be said. You can, you can sit here and condemn everybody as you do. I didn't condemn everybody. I condemned you and the city attorney. Emily did the right thing. Next person. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, no, Mr. Brown, we're done. You had your three minutes. What about all the other people that had to get variances? We, we followed the law. That we, 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 process. we followed the law, sir. Well, you certainly did because I told Mr. Flynn on more than one occasion, specifically about this particular section in the ordinance, and he chose to turn the other way, and so did you. No. Yes. We, uh, <coughs> gentlemen in the back of the room, would you like to speak? Stuart Lanner, 318 South 29th Street, Belleville. About a couple, about eight years ago, George Bush W. was accused of being a draft dodger because he uh, joined the Texas Air National Guard. He learned how to fly a jet airplane, which is extremely dangerous, even if it's just flying it in Texas. Uh, so. If the Democrats and the liberals and the news media want to call him a draft dodger for joining the Texas Air National Guard, I would say we'd have to, in all fairness, call Bill Ennard a draft dodger for joining the Illinois National Guard. He probably just did a desk job, never even got set foot off the ground. So he's just as big a, you know, a bigger draft dodger than George Bush. And I got a letter from Lindenwood College. We're having a little battle here. And uh, I said, that, how come they want Belleville after paying a dollar for the entire school system, like a multi-million dollar piece of property for a dollar? They got the nerve to charge Belleville $115,000 to fix up the tennis courts. And they replied, uh, here's a letter from their lawyer. Any mutual investments in athletic facilities for university or public use are carefully considered by local government, governmental officials and the staff of Wynwood to really do what is best for everybody. Well, now, I've been coming to these meetings for almost a year. In every meeting, all I hear is poor mouthing about how broke Belleville is. I'm sure I hope Belleville didn't pay these people $115,000 to use a tennis court. And uh, I also noticed that it said I in Belleville, but they bought uh, these police cars from some outfit in Missouri. 
They could, maybe they could get a good deal in Illinois, in uh, Belleville, but couldn't they find a, a dealership somewhere in Illinois? Illinois is in about as bad a shape as Belleville financially. You could have bought the car somewhere in Illinois, I believe. Just Mr. Lanham to explain, we bought the cars from the lowest bid and it was the person who, who had earned the state bid from the state of Illinois. And and that's just the way, Jamie, is that correct? I know they were the lowest bid, I'm not sure they were. I thought they were the state bid also. I'm not sure, I bet this lowest bid. The lowest, most responsible, and to be quite honest with you, I don't think any local, uh, no local dealerships uh, turned in a bid because the police packages are totally different, okay? We, last few years they have been, the, the, the state bid's been from, but this year it happened to be the lowest bid uh, was from this particular dealer. And, and that's correct. So, well, you might be right there. Yes, sir. Michael Heiberg, 701 Centerville Road. <coughs> On August 20th, the council approved Civic Plus to implement the new website. Is there an estimated date as to when the new website will be available for the public? Jamie, we'll be meeting with them. What's the end of March 2013 is the implementation. The launch date. Mm -hmm. They're meeting now. We're meeting. We're meeting via conference calls, etc. Staff right. is almost weekly. That seems like a long time. Are they not going to be paid until the site is completed? They're paying the first installment on signing the contract. The, the normal process is six months. Okay, thank you. Um, also, I would like to apologize for my comments about separating the storm and the sewer lines on East Washington Street. I was under the impression that the $88 million sewer project was a mandate by the Illinois EPA to separate the storm and sewer lines. I since learned that there is no such mandate. I further learned that none of the $88 million is budgeted for stormwater and sewer line separation. Brent May, 346 Summers Trace, President Belleville Firefighters Local 53. Mayor Eckert, Council Members, Belleville Firefighters Local 53 has over the last 10 years collected around $100,000 for the Muscular Dystrophy Association and its Fill the Boot campaign. This June, the Governor of Illinois signed legislation which made it easier for Illinois firefighters the ability to collect for MBA. The law allowed firefighters to utilize once unavailable locations, such as street intersections and in cities for this cause. The act also allowed for safety considerations and insurance coverage provided by the MBA for general liability. On July 16, 2012, the City of Belleville from the Mayor's Office issued an order that prohibited uniformed employees on duty and city vehicles from being used to collect for charitable functions. Belleville firefighters still took on the cause for MDA this summer. Off-duty firefighters were able to collect $7,200 for MDA using areas that were previously excellent for collecting but shut off over the last few years from us. This is far, far, far from the average of the nine dollars to $10,000 we collect. The overall consensus for collections being down this year, we feel, is the lack of visibility. In the past, Belleville firefighters have collected on duty and with trucks visible. We've never missed a run, we've never missed a call. The public knows who we are, what we're collecting for, and they've responded year after year, especially in a trying economy. Firefighters make up the lion's share of MDA's annual fundraising. The money MDA raises stays in this area, and provides camps for kids, medical treatment and supply, and vital research for treatment and cure of this affliction. Citizens of Belleville, stricken with muscular diseases, have benefited from this cause and shall continue in the future. Belleville firefighters shall continue to collect for MDA as long as the need is there. Mayor Eckert, council members, Belleville Firefighter Local 53 formally requests that the order prohibiting city vehicles and personnel be rescinded to allow us to continue to collect for this great cause. The complaints of a very few over the many years about firefighters out collecting for MDA pales in comparison to the outreach and positive reaction that our citizens have provided by donating time and time again and telling us thank you for what you do. Thank you. Thank you.
Ann, uh, you part of the same? I just have to piggyback really quickly. Um, as a representative of MDA, you name, you name oh, excuse me, I'm, I'm Lauren Green uh, with MDA, the Muscular Atrophy uh, Association of the Greater St. Louis area, including our local Metro East. Um, just to piggyback on what Grant said, I am I'm so very humbled to work with the Belleville Fire Department, Local 53, year after year, and we we heavily depend on this this income. Um, you know, I'm joined with some with an MBA family as well this evening, um, but I simply want to publicly thank the Belleville Fire Department, Local 53, for everything that they provide for our local families. Um, which is about 2,000 here just in the St. Louis Metropolitan East area. And thank you, Mayor Eckert and City Councilman, for allowing them to do so. Without this, I mean, $7,200 this year and over the past 10 years, $100,000, we certainly would not be where we are today as an organization serving our local families, sending them to camp, paying for research dollars, support groups, the list goes on. So I just wanted to publicly announce that and thank you as well. So. Can I hand it over to the MDA family if possible? Certainly. Thank you. Amy Cruz, 3904 Memorial Drive, Belva. And this is my daughter, Kayla. Here we go. <laughs> um, we also want to very much thank the City of Belva and the Belva Fire Department for everything that they do to support the MDA. We heavily rely upon the resources that MBA provides for us. And so do other families in this area. As a citizen, before we ever used MBA, we saw the firefighters on the street doing the boot campaign for a year. It's a very visual and very striking thing, even in those moments when you're a little irritated because you want to be five minutes faster or you want to come next. But it's one of the few occasions when you actually see those civil servants out on the street being visible and doing what they do. Most of the rest of the time, you see firefighters when your house is burning down. Or you see them at the schools when they're doing uh, educational opportunities at school events. I think that the MBA boot event is a very important thing for our civil servants to support. And I think it's a very important thing for them to be out there and to be very visible to all of our community, doing those things that help the citizens of our community who are also frequently very invisible. <clears throat> Thank you for letting them do what they do. And please give them back the right to do what they've been doing so visibly for so many years. And sorry. <laughs> For the, for the audience's sake, let me explain. First of all, I want to say to the firemen and to everyone in this room who has ever or who continues to give to MDA, thank you. We, we appreciate it. And we appreciate um, it's very difficult to stand up here tonight and, and to, to stand before a group of strangers and, and, and state something so, so serious and so meaningful to you. I applaud you for that. The reason that the ardor came is that um, didn't have a problem when the firemen went to the Walmarts or the, the shopping centers and, and stood there while they were working. We didn't have a problem because, yes, it's true, we never ever got a complaint that they were late on a call or anything. That was never the problem. The problem is, is the liability if someone would get hurt while they're on duty in an intersection we have the responsibility then to cover them under workman's comp and under all the insurance. Today we currently have 12 city policemen or firemen, is that correct, Jamie? On permanent insurance for life because of workman's comp claims, which Jamie, tell me if you can, isn't it about $300,000 a year? A little over $300,000 a year that the city of Belleville, the taxpayers, pay for these 12 individuals and their families to get insurance for life. My decision to not allow vehicles while working be at an intersection is to try to protect the city's interest to not take a chance 
to have an accident and have somebody get hurt and have the taxpayers have to foot the bill for that unfortunate situation. It's already unfortunate enough that, that young ladies like this are dealing with situations like MDA. We will continue to encourage if they want to go to a fixed site where they're not on the traffic lanes. I would allow that. We would have in the past. We just can't start that our insurance agent and our attorneys present and past have said that it's extremely dangerous liability wise and we're opening ourselves up to a lot of liability. Uh, I would be glad if you want to come see us and talk about other ways that we can help offset that difference in money. Maybe we can help you. Do you, do you receive any United Way funds? We don't. We don't receive United Way funding or governmental funding. <coughs> and one thing I, I do want to quickly say is I, I absolutely understand your concern. That's why cities have ordinances in place. Um, but NBA takes such great value in our firefighters that, that we have an insurance policy for firefighters, period. I understand, but if, if they get hurt, I can tell you they are entitled by law to workman's comp. They are entitled by law, if one of them unfortunately would be deemed seriously hurt, they are entitled to insurance for life. So these are things, as the chief executive officer of the employees of almost 400 we have, that we're looking at, at making sure that we are not liable in a way that could harm the taxpayers. It's not that I don't believe in it. It's not that I don't appreciate the firemen's efforts. I applaud them. I think this is great. We just have to think of another way other than standing out in the traffic where they are, every time they go to an accident, they're at risk. Every time they run that fire truck uh, and go to a call and, and whether they're helping the police with an accident scene or whatever, unfortunately we see highway workers who are hit and, and killed and we see people hurt and gravely, gravely injured. I just feel that this is a situation that we could avoid and I would, like I said, gladly sit down with you or the fire department personnel or others to look at other ways maybe we can get better exposure for your fundraising campaign. But standing out at the intersections, I would not be doing my job if we continue to allow that, uh, especially since we are liable for the workman's comp and the insurance for life if one of them unfortunately gets hurt. And that's, that's the reason behind this. And thank you. And I, I look forward to talk with you at the end of the meeting, and we can look at some alternatives. And um, and we appreciate that. Thank okay. you so very much. All right. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Can we talk about this issue a little bit? I, I also Let, let's I, get in regular session. Okay. Let's finish. Right. Let's finish. Alderman Hart, you want some public participation? <laughs> Dean Hart, 100 North 81st Street. And I wanted to thank all the residents and volunteers that came out on Belleville helping Belleville Day on September 8th and helped with the West End Cleanup Project. We had a wonderful turnout and accomplished several items. I also wanted to thank Amy Moran with the YMCA, Jim Schneider, Peggy Hartman, and Emily Fultz for their hard work in planning the event. And then Chuck Schaefer for allowing Rich Andrevine and David Harris to help those volunteers work safely on West Main Street. Their support and help was greatly appreciated. Thank you all very much, and I look forward to helping with more days of service in the future. Thank you. Thanks, Dean. And I agree, that was a, a great first year, first start, and I think that can be built upon. Jim and I have had a good conversation. I, I see that Belleville, Belleville Helping Belleville Day is really growing into being a tremendous annual event, and, and not just once a year, but throughout the year, so thank you for doing that. Anybody else in public participation? I will close public participation, and, and, and all of the whole, what we'll do is we get along the meeting, we'll go back to this, okay? If we can, just for the sake of a couple people who are here, I have a, a young lady who is, uh, about two weeks ago I had the privilege, and Jim did also, of, of going out to one of the high schools and speaking to representatives from Altoff Catholic High School, Belleville West and Belleville East, who are part of the basic initiative. And it's a fabulous group of uh, young men and women from our three high schools. And we have one of those young ladies here tonight, Kylie Sullivan, who's a sophomore at Alto. Now I'm gonna ask her to come up. I told her she can, she can go ahead and, and take us wherever she wants. It might be real short and sweet, but uh, she's part of the basic initiative and she's gonna talk about our character word of the month. Hi, my name is Kylie Sullivan and I'm a sophomore at Alto Catholic High School. 
And this is my second year on the basic initiative for uh, the high school students. And the word of the month is responsibility. By definition, responsibility means to take credit for one's own actions without blaming others. But to me, responsibility, it means a little bit more than that. As a student, I'm responsible for my grades, which is just an example because as students, we're responsible for learning, not paying attention to where the grades are our responsibility. We cannot blame the teachers for bad teaching. It's our responsibility to learn. And if we need help, we go ask. That's just our responsibility as students. Our responsibility as part of the basic initiative is to go around the younger community to different grade schools to kind of spread the word about basic character. Last year, we, um, we went to, we call it the cookie run, where we went to different grade schools and we read to them about bucket filling which is kind of building their, building their classmates up to with compliments instead of emptying their bucket with negative things. And they responded to that really well. They all kind of understood responsibility to make each other feel better instead of bringing them down. And I think responsibility is important for us all to grow up. We all need to have responsibility to mature, to understand what we need to do in life to take credit for our own actions instead of blaming others. Thank you. Thank you. I hope all of you get a chance. We had two outstanding young ladies speak before us here tonight. Uh, I hope all of you can get a chance to ever sit down and talk with this basic group uh, from our high schools. It will be uh, very, very, you'll be very impressed. I'm very moved by it. their enthusiasm, their, their giving back already in the community. Here's a group right here. Uh, you talk about the MBA. You want to talk to these folks. These are the movers and shakers of Belleville. Uh, it's amazing what they have done. It's amazing what they raised for some important charities in the past and what they can do when they put high school minds and energy together. Uh, that would be a group I would strongly uh, this might be a really good stop for you tonight if you can go and have a little audience with them and talk about what she also has seen here tonight. Kylie, thank you very much. And thanks to your mother for coming here also. Uh, today I also want to thank everyone who uh, participated in the character walk. Uh, some of the basic kids, I know how tough she couldn't, she couldn't sneak out of class today, but some of the kids uh, did get out for a little bit. And we, we had a character walk again today. Uh, from City Hall through downtown and, and over to St. Elizabeth's Hospital where we were met by uh, the, uh, uh, the doctor who's the chef of the medical staff and a host of us, Jim Schneider and I, and several said just a few words, Matt Klosterman from School District 118. This character initiative is important. We had Molly Watkins, a representative of the Chamber of Business component, um, all working, speaking about the importance of a community, being a community of character. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, I, I applaud our youth for leading us because they're the ones that started this initiative. Many years ago in schools, we caught on board in 2005 when they came to my office shortly after I became mayor. And uh, I think it's one of the greatest things ever that the chamber, businesses, when you go down through the city now and see marquees that have the uh, character worth of the month uh, in different banks and stores and businesses and schools, it speaks and preaches to what we're all about and that's being a good character. So. Thank you, and thanks for coming tonight. And I, I hope more of your members come and share the words with us. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Me. Uh, at this time, uh, I would like to ask everyone to join me in a moment of silence. Last week, uh, we lost a great friend to the city. He was one of our police and fire commissioners for over 15 years. I can't even count the number of years he served uh, as uh, on the Parks and Recreation Board and did other things for our Parks Department. So Mr. Darrell Elby passed away and, and was laid to rest last week, and uh, just a very, very outstanding friend to Belleville. And if we could just pause for a moment. I thank you for that, and uh, certainly if you know his family or run into his family, please continue to support them because they, they lost a great father and uh, husband and, and uh, friend, and, and we all did. That being said, because of Daryl's death, uh, I am asking tonight to uh, ask for a motion to appoint Terry Delaney to the Police and Fire Commission due to the vacancy created by the death of Daryl Elby. Do I hear a motion? 
Motion by Alderman Rujewitz, second, second by Alderman Heisler. Uh, just let me say that uh, Terry Delaney is no stranger. He held this position before, uh, had stepped aside a couple years ago due to the changes in his schedule in life, and uh, came back to me when Darrell was so sick and, and, and said if I can help. And um, before we even had a chance to do anything on a temporary basis, um, Darrell passed. And so at this time I ask, uh, we have a motion, we have a second. If there's no other questions, I would. Could you clarify this is fulfilling this term? Uh, yes, I don't even know though. I, I honestly don't, I didn't get a chance to get through to Russell Scott today. I honestly don't know if Daryl's got one or two years left on his term. We'll have to look at that, but it's completing Daryl's term at this time. Okay. I ask for a roll call vote. Heisler? Aye. Kinsella? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Holt? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Rajewitz? Aye. Carpenter? Aye. Hart? Aye. Chelsea? Aye. Hayden? Aye. Cybert? Aye. Martin? Aye. Schneider? Aye. Lustro? Aye. Motion carries. Terry Delaney, stand up, buddy. <laughs> For those that don't know, Terry was, uh, and if those in the bio, I had a book, uh, I told him to keep his bio to a, a, a one page. Uh, but he was our former chief of police for several years. He was the U.S. Marshal, I believe, for about nine years, and he was this Illinois State Trooper for probably just state captain for just shy of 30 years. So he's uh, got a lot of law enforcement experience, and uh, he'll be on that commission with Russell Scott and Johnny Anthony. Uh, the three of them will be our uh, continue as our police and fire commissioner. So thank you, Terry. Now you, you're excused to go watch the Orioles play. He's an avid Oriole fan, so I told him he could go. Okay, at this time. Um, I want to uh, read a brief proclamation. I know it seems like we're not getting on the meeting, but these are important things. <coughs> Emily Fultz uh, brought this to my attention, and I think based on what we're embarking about to do, I think this, this proclamation says a lot. Proclamation is whereas community planning provides an opportunity for all residents to be meaningfully involved in making choices that determine the future of their community. And whereas change is constant and affects all cities, towns, suburbs, counties, boroughs, townships, rural areas, and other places, and whereas community planning and plans can help manage this change in a way that provides better choices for how people work and live, and whereas the full benefits of planning requires public officials and citizens who understand, support, and demand excellence in planning and plan implementation, and whereas the City of Belleville is embarking on the very important task of updating its comprehensive plan, which will guide development in the city over the next 20 years, and whereas participation of residents and business owners of all ages, backgrounds, will be critical to the development of this plan, and whereas the month of October is designated as National Community Planning Month throughout the United States of America and its territories, and whereas the American Planning Association and its professional institute, the American Institute of Certified Planners, endorse National Community Planning Month as an opportunity to highlight the contributions, sound planning, and plan implementation made to the quality of our settlements and environment. And whereas the celebration of the National Community Planning Month gives us the opportunity to publicly recognize the participation and dedications of the members of the planning commissions and other citizen planners who have contributed their time and expertise to the improvement of the City of Belleville. And whereas we recognize the many valuable contributions made by professional planners for the City of Belleville and Southwestern Illinois, and extend our thanks for their continued commitment to public service. Uh, now be it resolved that uh, October 2012 is hereby designated as Community Planning Month in the City of Belleville in conjunction with the celebration of National Community Planning Month. We felt this was very important at this time because we are getting ready, as you'll hear tonight, uh, of action to be taken to put together our comprehensive plan, which will guide us for the next 20 years. We will be asking for public input. We will be having meetings and, 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 and town hall input to, to get all of your thoughts on how we should be planning and growing the city and what's important for our future. So we felt that this, and I want to say thank you to Emily, her, her um, education that she's obtained in a short time in this young lady's life and what she's done for our planning department has been superb. And, uh, and I also want to publicly thank all the people for the city uh, from our planning commission who volunteer 
uh, year after year after year and, and can give a lot of their time to help us map out these things. So thank you very much. This time we ask for the, uh, the reading of the minutes. We have the minutes of the regular city council meeting held September 17, 2012. What's your pleasure? Your Honor, I'd like to make a motion to approve and file the minutes. We have a motion by Alderman Heisler. Do I hear a second? Second by Alderman Meyer. Do I hear discussion? All in favor of accepting the minutes and handing them file signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Claims payroll and disbursements. Yes, Your Honor. They have the claims payroll and disbursements to be paid. Motion by Alderman Anderson. Do I hear a second? Motion, Your Honor. Second by Alderman Heisler. Do I hear discussion? Roll call. Heisler. Aye. Chancella. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Holt. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Rezewitz. Aye. Carpenter. Aye. Hart. Aye. Silsby. Aye. Haynes. Aye. Seibert. Aye. Martinson? Aye. Snyder? Aye. Musgrove? Aye. Motion carries. Oral reports. Alderman Anderson? Yes, Your Honor. On behalf of the Master Service Committee, I make a motion to approve the long term control plan construction fee request number 27 from Gordon Blue John to No Way Morton for the total amount of $1,425,098.82. And I so move that. Motion by Alderman Anderson. Anderson. Second by Alderman Hayden. Discussion on that pay request. Roll call. Heisler. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Holt. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Rodulis. Aye. Carpenter. Aye. Hart. Aye. Silsby. Aye. Hayden. Aye. Cyber. Aye. Martinson. Aye. Schneider. Aye. Musgrove. Aye. Motion carries. Alderman Martinson. Uh, on behalf of the Finance Committee, I would like to make a motion to accept the proposal to assume the city paying for street lights for Park Ridge subdivision. So moved, Motion by Alderman Martin said, do I hear a second? Second. Second by Alderman Hart, do I hear discussion? Roll call. Heisler. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Holt. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Rudgewood. Aye. Carpenter. Aye. Hart. Aye. Selsby. Aye. Hayden. Aye. Cyber. Aye. Martin. Aye. Schneider. No. Let's go. Aye. Motion carries. Alderman Martinson. Okay, on this next motion, Your Honor, I'd like to uh, make an adjustment or a correction to the language as it's written here in the agenda. And that would be to remove the figure of $2,000 and replace that language with 100% of city's cost. So the motion I would like to make is to approve Stonehenge's proposal of the city paying for street lighting to be reimbursed 100% of the city's cost to Stonehenge each year. So move your Motion by Alderman Martinson, do I hear a second? I hear second by Alderman Cyber, do I hear discussion? Yeah. Yes, sir. <coughs> yeah. I, I just wanted to say quickly, we had this uh, issue brought up with, with the term Creek uh, Gated Community. I had uh, some constituents contact me uh, in relation to that as being located in the private uh, subdivision. And I wanted to make it clear to them and the public why I supported it and why I supported these two at the Finance Committee. And, and basically, when, when street lights were first put in, they were used as an aid for vehicles and cars. In today's world, street lights are now an aid to fight crime. And, and I believe that the citizens of the city of Belleville, and I understand those that are against it, but I, I think that the citizens of Belleville deserve equal protection of the law, and that's why I support this uh, measure. And I wanted to make that clear to okay. my people. Thank you. So we have a motion and we have a second. Any further? Yes, ma'am. Yes, on the Turtle Creek lights. I just don't think we should have paid for that. We, as citizens, cannot use the streets. Those gates are closed when the lights come on. So we're paying for their luxury out of our pocket or out of the city's funding. It just should have not happened. Now here we're paying for another one, but then another one's going to reimburse the city. We have no, there's no structure. One's one way and another's the other way. This is just not a proper way of doing it. If we do for one, we should do for all. Well, and I think that's what you're saying. They, we, we, they we brought forward, the council voted and approved Turtle Creek, and, and once but we did... That should not have happened. 
but, 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 but Alderman Schneider, it did happen, and it passed with the majority of votes. It but passed it several months ago. But we were informed the whole truth. Turtle Creek doesn't even pay their sewer bills to the city of Belleville. Oh. And if they were saying they, because we give them police and fire and they pay taxes, if they would have had to use Swansea for volunteers, their homeowner's insurance, the fire rating, would be a lot higher because the city of Belleville has a very good fire department. Our fire rating for our insurance is good. They we're, we're, don't pay a full trash. We're, we're, Most of them are seniors. We've already passed Turtle Creek. It's it's done business several months ago. We've moved on since they read it in the paper. These other two areas, and I think they're the last areas. But we knew. I said it. I said it at the time at the committee meeting. Just be aware. If we pass Turtle Creek, there's probably two other locations that I know of are probably going to come forward. And I wouldn't try to influence it. I would just be honest. That be aware. Well, now they have, and we're voting on them. And, and, but Turtle Creek's an issue that's a moot point at this point. We, we've taken care of that. It's been, we passed it, it was done the democratic, the, the, the proper way, and it's passed. Your Honor, I would like to explain why they are, they are paying some things. There are 24 lights on in that area, and 11 of them are street lights. And we're basically paying for the street lights. But the other 13 are perimeter lights, and uh, internal lights, which we don't pay for anybody. So the reason that they're paying part of it is because they are receiving internal lights and perimeter lights, which we don't pay for. Them. Okay. I just want the audience to know that. And, and further, as Mr. Casilla pointed out, with the way it's built, they, they can't separate them. So that's, that's why we had it. And that's how the investigation went, and that's why we're, where we're at. I mean, I think it's a, a fair deal, and, and I'm glad uh, Alderman Martinson corrected it because 2000. It, it was it was just that was used as a figure as a, a approximation. But by saying being billed the actual, if this L, if Ameren raises their rates in the future, the city isn't going to be locked into only collecting two thousand dollars. We'll get what the bill is, but they're still going to get a good deal. It's going to help them, and it's going to be fair to us, and, and I think it's a good deal. So we've had discussion. We had a motion and a second, correct, Mrs. Fields? Yes. Roll call. Heisler. Aye. 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 Aye.
Seidler? Aye. Markinson? Aye. Schneider? No. Musgrove? Aye. Ayes have it. Motion carries. Solicitor's uh, license. Um, we have a request uh, for a solicitor's request from Jerry D. Grant to solicit exterior home products for ridge top roofing and siding. What's your pleasure? Oh, I would agree. If you, if you, but uh, that's there's some of them I think are an issue. I don't want them all. Let's do, let's do them individual. We got a request. So, I'm asking for a motion on the first one. I'll make a motion. Motion to approve by Alderman Schneider. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Alderman Kinsella. Any discussion about this first person? All in favor of approving the uh, first solicitor's license for Jerry D. Grant? Signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Next one, I'd ask for a motion to approve, consider for approval, a request from Jacob E. Martin to solicit for exterior home products for ridge top roofing and siding. Um, motion by Alderman Silsby. Second. Second by Alderman Martinson. Any discussion? All in favor for that motion, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> motion carries. I'd ask for a motion of consideration for a license request from Joshua E. Heck to solicit exterior home products for ridge top roofing and siding. Motion to deny. Motion to deny by Alderman Hart. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Alderman Musgrove. Do I hear discussion? All in favor of denying this gentleman on item E, uh, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> Motion carries. The next one, uh, there's a request uh, for a license request from Mark C. Picard to solicit exterior home products from Ridgetop Roofing. Denied. Motion by Alderman Schneider to deny. Second. Yeah. Second by Alderman Martinson. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion to deny signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> motion carries. Next one, solicitor's license from Sarah N. Friedrich to solicit for exterior home products for Jarvis Exteriors. Motion, motion to approve by Alderman Meyer. Who is the second? Second by Alderman Hart. Any discussion on Sarah Friedrich? All in favor of this motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Last one. Oh, well, that's last one. Last one. This page. H. Solicitor's license request asking for a motion for, for Timothy L. Williams to solicit for four, C4 Connections LC, LLC. Motion by Alderman Priscilla to deny. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Alderman Musgrove to deny. Any discussion? All in favor of denying signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. The last one is aye. Uh, ask for a motion uh, to request permission for Frank G. Du Bois to solicit for four C4 Connections LLC. What's your privilege? What's your thoughts? Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Alderman Meyer. Who's the second? Second by Alderman Carpenter. Any discussion? Is there any reason why there's not an application with this one? Honestly, I didn't catch that. I, I had. Uh, had uh, General Keaton in my office, we went through them all, and he was either one of us about that. Um, he and I did feel like this one was okay, but I didn't see about that I had the application. I'll, I'll go back and look on that. We'll just make sure that we have it. We can table this one. Motion to table? Second. Does the original motion agree? Yeah. So, yeah. All in favor of tabling signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> motion carries. This time we have a, ask for a motion to accept the Historic Preservation Commission's recommendation of LAF, how do you say that, Eric? Lasser. Lasser and Associates to conduct the West Belleville National Register Historic District nomination and to enter into contract negotiations for the total project cost not to exceed $20,000. Motion by Alderman Meyer. Who is the second? Second by Alderman Carpenter. Any discussion? Can we just get a little bit of how this process was? Uh, Eric, do you want to step up and tell us a few things? Yeah, we sent out an RQ. Uh, we get some direct solicitations from the list of qualified consultants from the Illinois Historic Preservation Agency. We also put it on the website. We have folks in it in the Democrat. We got six responses. Uh, and then the Historic Preservation Commission reviewed all the responses. And then we discussed it at a special meeting last week. And uh, this was the top choice of the commission. Unanimously. Unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. 
Okay, so we have a motion, we have a second to approve item J on uh, your agenda tonight. Any discussion further? Roll call. Aye. 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 Discussion. Uh, roll. Was it? Do we have a question? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're right. Roll call. Heisler. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Meyer. Aye. 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 Anderson. Aye. Rajewitz. Aye. Carpenter. Aye. Hart. Aye. Silsby. Aye. Hayden. Aye. Cyber. Aye. Martinson. Aye. Schneider. Aye. Musgrove. Aye. Um, okay, we have communications. I'm going to ask Mr. Turner to help me out. As a group? Does anybody have a problem with this as a group? There is one slight change. Uh, there's a typo. On B, it should be from 4 p.m. to 1 a.m., not 2 p.m. Uh, item A, communication from Belgium Main Street to the Western Commission to hold their heart and line walk in downtown Belleville on November 17, 2012, from 5 to 9 p.m. B, communication from seven restaurant and lounge requesting permission to block off High Street between East Main and Worcester Street for their third annual Halloween party on October 27, 2012, from 4 p.m. until 1 a.m. Motion by Alderman Second Alderman Heisler. Any discussion? All in favor of approving these two communications signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We have no petitions, no resolutions, no ordinances. Um, this is new business. If you want to go now, we can go back and, and, and your questions will hold in. Okay, I'm sorry. Well, we, we talked about the broadcast and council meetings with the Department of Employment and University. We want to know where we're, where we're doing that part. And a meeting with them again. Uh, who's in the room? Well, Rich was with me. Jamie, were you in the room that last meeting? We met with them about a week ago. We're making progress. Uh, there was some real issues they ran into at one point uh, that thought there was going to be some astronomical fee to get fiber optics to the two buildings. They have since found out some information, their engineers, that made that situation a lot more palatable, and they're back to the drawing board. They were to the tune that was going to cost $40,000 for each of us to, to lay the fiber optic line to City Hall. Uh, I questioned it right away, but I told them I was the, the least engineer person in that room. They went back to the drawing board, supposedly. Now, that's not the case. They're working. They're working. Uh, they had a very good meeting uh, with Lindenwood after I left that meeting, because I had another meeting to go to, and supposedly worked out many of the details. Uh, they're meeting again. I believe we're going to meet again in about 10 days to two weeks. This has been a slower process than we thought, but it's been, we've had, probably four meetings with the Charter. Uh, now, I understand also that Lindenwood is just getting their program up and running. Tom Calhoun, who's going to be one of their new uh, teachers for their uh, communications program out there, who's a well-known Bevel uh, person that always grew up here. Uh, his father was an alderman many years ago. Uh, they are all working diligently to try to get this worked out. I don't have an exact timeline, but uh, as of the other day, I think we're making progress. We were kind of stalled for a little bit. Uh, yes, ma'am. Can I ask a question on something else? Yes, ma'am. Um, I was reading the newsletter. The newsletter Sorry. just sent it out, came today. It'll be in the mail in the next couple of days. Okay, it says referendum shall be. Oh, well, I'm just getting the mic. Sorry. Referendum shall be a bell have the authority to arrange for supply of electricity. Well, when we first approved this company, we were supposed to get um, learning, I don't know what to call it learning, but informational meeting on this before the election. And I haven't heard of anything people have asked. Linda, have you had any conversation with them? They're, they're, they're going to be campaigning. They're supposed to be campaigning. 
we, the agreement we had. Information out to the public. Yeah, they're supposed to be getting the information, mailers or whatever. But they now, were supposed to have like town hall meetings, is what they said. When and, and, and you know, once again, I think we agreed to put it on the ballot because it's an opportunity for our residents to save money. Uh, none of us have the expertise here at City Hall, nor the time, to run that campaign. So well, then, and they were supposed to inform the we can, we can certainly, Jamie, you remind me tomorrow, we'll call them, we'll tell them it was brought up at council meeting, we'll ask, I, I agree, I kind of thought we'd have something out there in front of us by now. But, okay, uh, they were going to have a town hall meeting, he said it right here, that he you was just, Did you have some time to tell me? He agreed to the town hall meeting, but he said, you know, just let him know. I don't think anybody got to contact him to say they wanted a town hall meeting. He said that he certainly asked, you know, to yeah, educate but, us on this. Yeah, but he, he said, just let me know. Well, I know they're planning, they're planning to do, I, I believe they're, they're planning to do mailers. Is that correct, Dorothy? Yeah, they're going to do all that kind of thing. No, they but they should be one. where the people, they said that they would be here for the people to ask them. He said that you would be sure to contact them. I guess that's not contact them to get it started. That's not normally their procedure with the company. Okay. We'll call tomorrow and find out where they're at, and we'll, we'll email the owner and then tell you our update once we find some out tomorrow. Okay. Can we please go back to the finance issue? No. Okay, I agree with you 100% that it's a wonderful effort they're putting in, but I do have concerns. And honestly, my question, um, Mr. Flynn, when they are out, even though they're off duty, they're kind of doing it as a group, as a fire department. Are they still? Well, they, well, I think they sign up. If they do it when they're off duty, you, it's you're not. If you're not on the clock, we're then not We're not responsible, chief, for our gym, for workers' comp, all those types of things. Right? Okay. And, and and that's the whole thing. It's not. It's not that we don't. Well, believe I understand. I, I, I agree with you. And and perhaps the situation is best fixed by like you said, let the fire truck go back and get in front of Walmart. Well, I don't, I, don't, I don't have an issue with that. It's, but, but out in the intersections, if you remember, this was a tough decision a number of years ago when we stopped the veterans from doing it. And we stopped a lot of organizations, the poppies, and they were very emotional. Uh, it was a very tough call. But, but we saw where a couple of communities throughout the state and throughout the Midwest did have an incident, and then they were involved in litigation. Um, this day and age, you know, like I said, unfortunately, with the number of, we have 63 paid sworn firefighters. If, if just one person gets hurt, uh, all the good intent in the world, uh, you know, can be, you know, a workman's comp case. We, you know, we've seen what happens when you get somebody severely injured. I mean, we, we've had a couple situations where we've we've been involved with some really tragic things. Do we have any restrictions at all? I have a question because we did run into them on the way home from church Sunday. A couple of them were standing on a traffic island, but as we were turning left, you are probably talking about volunteer departments? Yes. You know, here, here's the thing. They have to do what the state law now says. I think the state law says they have to borrow by the insurance. Right. They have to, et cetera. Now, will some of these fire districts eventually continue to allow it? I can't speak for them. When it, when it came to my attention that the law had been changed, and, and, and I applaud the efforts of the, the initiative, but from a liability, I have to look at it from a liability standpoint. And I don't see anybody jumping up and down here disagreeing with me and, and trying to overturn what the council passed a number of years ago. I, I, well, think, I was surprised to run into them at all. I thought yeah, that well, we they, didn't have they, they, That state law just changed recently, what, Brad, in the last six months? Yeah. What? Yeah, I'm so it's been less than six months. And, 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 and uh, we learned of it through our normal bulletin that Linda gets from the state. And, and, and so, um, I, I understand, I appreciate what they're trying to do. Oh, and, and just from a standpoint, and that's why I said I'm in sincerely. You gave Dorothy your card, mm -hmm. we'll talk. Yeah. I mean, I, I, if there's something, you know, I think the person before you at one time <coughs> came to me a couple years ago. And, and, and uh, but I, I just think it, it's, it's, it's about our responsibility. If, if heaven forbid somebody would get hurt, there's no way around the law. We are responsible per workman's comp if they're on duty. And if they would be hurt bad enough, we are responsible for them and their families for life with insurance. And and, and that's where NDA comes in place. And we'll, we'll have, we can talk, you know, other than this evening. Well, there's no, no matter what you have insurance policy or not, it will not supersede 
what, what the law is. The law is if, a, if an employee is hurt while on the clock, they are entitled to workman's comp rights under, under law, and they also then, if they would be hurt so bad that they would be disabled, they are then, according to the state of Illinois, they are then eligible for possible insurance for life. And, and no matter what you might sign, I'll tell you, in, in, a, in a court case, we're going to lose that one. And, and all I'm saying is, 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 is well intended as it is, and I, I, I appreciate the well intent, the well intendedness. But, but when we're paying right now, the city of Belleville is paying a little over $300,000 a year for a total of 12 policemen and firemen who are, they and their families are in insurance for life. And, and, and we, have, we have one case that is extremely notable and very much, um, you know, obviously everybody understands and that's the, the, the sad situation of John Brown. We have other cases that have been discussed and been back and forth in court and back and forth in different pension boards and everything else discussed about, you know, is a, is a knee, you know, a, you know, or if somebody can go on and work and, and, and still have a good income, is this, a, you know, is this, you know, so there's all these different things because of the way the courts have interpreted. I, I just feel like not to put us in that trick box, when this came back to my desk, to me this was an executive decision that had to be made, um, and, and if it was going to be tested, the council was going to have to be involved with the vote. But I think at this point, I talked to Mr. Flynn, and, and we, we felt that it was, acting in the best interest of the city. I agree, and I, I would encourage you to help through this and so, see if we can help them. I don't have a problem with that. Yeah. I don't have a problem with that at all. Yes, sir. Uh, Mayor, maybe enlighten myself and the public on this. Uh, are the firemen not allowed to do this law right now? They can do it under volunteer time. On volunteer. Yeah, they just, we, what I have said is they can't take city equipment and they cannot do it while they're working. But when they do that, then the city is in harm's way of us being responsible uh, far, far the situation. They would, heaven forbid, be hurt. We are then in a situation that we can't back up. Yes, ma'am. Um, but they're not allowed to be in the street no matter what, right? They can do it at Walmart. No, they, they could, according to this new state legislation that was passed, they could volunteer and go in the street. Okay? okay. They could. They, they can't. They, now there's some, there's some steps that they have to pass. MDA, I think, has to, they have to make sure that they prove insurance, right, Mrs. Fields? We have to prove the locations. Some, some intersections are more dangerous than others. They have to show their certificate of insurance, and they have to notify us when they're going to be in the center like that. The but, in right, in the manner in which they're collecting. But they're going to do that on their time, um, you know, et cetera. Now, is there any way the alderman can step in and help the fire department do this? I'm quite sure there would be a lot of us that would volunteer when the firemen, so we don't have to have as many firemen out on the street or at Walmart or whatever, if we put an alderman with a fireman or something. You, you, can, you certainly have the right to talk to the union or the lady here from MDA to help in any way we can. I would encourage that. But I, I, I just, but I'm just saying, I'm not, you know, I'm not being, the, we're not being bad people because we have a responsibility to the taxpayers just to protect them in, in case, heaven forbid, the extreme happens. And, and as many lawsuits that come across the desk and many claims that come across our desk uh, for workman's comp, et cetera, I gotta be realistic, it can happen, and, and I don't want anybody of our city family to get hurt, but if it does happen, we have to make sure that we protect our interest, and our interest is we would be responsible. Yeah. Did, did I misunderstand you earlier when, I understand that the street issue, but what if they take the truck and Set in front of I've let them take, I, the chief and I have not had a problem in the past, right chief? Not at Walmart. Huh? Walmart's fine. Yeah, we didn't have a problem going to Walmart because they're standing on the sidewalk, the truck's parked off the side, no different, they're going there for an inspection or anything else, or, you know, occasionally they run in there to the grocery store or something. We don't, but I, and again, I'm not debating because I don't have No, I don't, we don't have, I don't have. But I thought the memo mayor said none at all. Not in the street. You know, I have to go back. It's been several weeks, a month or so since I. I mean, again, I don't have a problem. I, I, I don't think they could use it, but I but, but they couldn't use any city vehicle or, or at, at any place. I, I think our big thing is there was a question about the intersection out there. Right. I think of one of the intersections, and we we just talked and we said, you know, not in any intersections. If they're back at a, a place where they're on solid ground, uh, stand on a sidewalk in front of the doors of Walmart or Target or Lowe's or Home Depot or some big store like that, 
I don't have heartburn with that. I don't think we have near the liability. Okay? Does that pretty more answer the questions? Can I ask another question? Yes, I'm not finished business. Um, about the housing inspectors having to quote the law that they are citing people from. Have we decided? Are we working Mr. Flynn? The uh, section cited by Mr. Brown, I think he circulated those sections, maybe uh, to, to you also, as well as myself, they do not apply to the city. The, uh, the sections only apply to those municipalities that have adopted those particular divisions that are referenced in that bill. And the city of Belleville has not adopted you know, either one of those divisions. And the divisions really are more, uh, more uh, uh, in reference to municipalities that have uh, uh, municipal courts as opposed to the city. Oh, okay. Well, think, yes, John, I wanted to uh, do, first of all, thank you for the meeting uh, this afternoon. Uh, reference many issues, but mainly the uh, 17th Street issue and let the public know that we are cognizant of, of the uh, you know speed and, and issues that they will be addressed. And, and when is the tentative Ribbon cutting for the public situation. Ten of the ribbon cutting will make a decision in a day or two. I excused Tim tonight because it was an anniversary. Um, we're looking at October 15th. The other thing, you make a good point, I'm glad to, I, I signed an executive order Friday, I believe it was, and the street department went out and put up and created Bevel Crossing and Bevel West Parkway into a three-way stop. This will go to uh, traffic committee this month, Mike, It'll then go to um, back to council the, the third, the next meeting in two weeks to get that and get an ordinance from Mr. Flynn to endorse that. This was talked about back in 2007 when we laid the concrete for that first, that, that second phase really uh, from the back of Joseph down to the 20th Street. We said then that we would definitely need, when this is opened up, a three way stop. This past week, with some people starting to use that road, even though it's not officially open, we were reminded very quickly that we need that stop. So this, the three-way stop has is, is been put into effect per executive order, and I will ask the council to, uh, to support that with a permanent ordinance at the next meeting. And the speed limit on Belleville Crossing, City Council ordinance book says if anywhere it's not posted in a residential area, speed limit is 25 if not posted. From Main Street to the 500 block of South 17th Street, where the road will turn the corner and become Bevel Crossing, at that point, the speed limit out to target will be 30 miles per hour, uh, as designated and as talked about. 25. Up to the area of 25, but after right. you turn there, it'll be from, from there, Bevel Crossing will be 30 miles an hour. Right. Now, if that gets to be a problem, we'll have to readdress it. We are going to put the proper warning signs. Uh, they're going to, if they haven't already, they will be putting up the proper warning signs to show that the stop ahead's up there. And, and we're going to ask the chief of police, uh, well, Lieutenant Ice Cans here tonight, so I'll ask him to pass this back to him to remind me that we're going to ask for the speed monitor when they first open up to get people uh, kind of acclimated to what they're going. That's a big stretch of road there. I guarantee you they're going to want to go over 30. It's going to be human nature. So we're going to have to get the police car out there early on and kind of remind people, 30 miles an hour on that open stretch of road is probably not going to seem near fast enough, but we're not going to tolerate a raceway. It's going to be a great road to get over to Route 15. It's going to greatly be safer for our school kids. It's going to be a, a, a tremendous uh, asset to the, the, the stores out there. The car dealerships are can't wait to open it. But, but we have deemed through the engineers that 30 miles an hour would be an appropriate speed at this time. We're going to monitor. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Um, I was at the meeting of my club talking, and we talked about speed. Now, is there any way I can get a copy of the minutes? Of I think you should talk to Tim. I don't know that because they broke up and went up and talked to the engineers. I don't, the discussion part. I, I, you know, I didn't take the minutes, so you're going to have to talk to, uh, <coughs> if you would, Tim. Have I think there's certain town hall meetings where they're taking minutes, but I think that was kind of again uh, they updated some of the stuff. I, I don't know. I'm not I making excuses. Your Honor, I think that was the Highland group. Had the Highland had that, that meeting, that yeah, so maybe they had minutes. Yeah, they had, that would be Highland. We, we came as a request. One of the main topics, 
Uh, well, and they did, they did, but they primarily, most of their discussion, as you know, was afterwards individual people. I, so I asked your honors because I couldn't, I had another conflict, couldn't attend, and the answer was there was no minutes because it, it, in his perspective, it was deemed more of a open house. Which, which they, so they, they had, a, Highland had a brief, right. you know, question and answer thing, and then yeah, I, I understood that. Okay. All right, yes. I'm going to revisit the uh, fundraising. Uh, would, are you basically asking that you be able to raise more money with uh, firemen that are on duty? Like in uniform, I'm, I'm Statistically speaking, here. nationally, firefighters collect for MBA nationally, and they collect more money on duty on the streets. Now, we obviously work very close with the firemen to make sure that they take the safest intersection possible for them. Um, but as I mentioned, we, we've declined this year because you know we, we weren't granted on duty permission. Um, but researchly speaking, we collect more money, or firefighters collect more money for our mission if they're on duty. Yeah, on appreciate that. Yeah. Hey, could I add just a point of reference on uh, something with the disability thing? Uh, the mayor did mention the catastrophic disability part of reference to combat, but that's only if we're injured in the line of duty at a fire, at a scene, on the way to a scene. But, but you know as well as I do, the, the, the Supreme Court pretty much, Mr. Chief, I think we talked about this, has pretty much struck down some of the cases that was challenged and basically said if you're on duty, uh, you're probably going to get it. Yeah, and, and, I, I, and we, we have to check and see what the NBA coverage is on that because I think if the NBA coverage might supersede the city's coverage. With respect to well, the NBA doesn't want to take, if there would be a situation and, and the courts wouldn't hold or wouldn't rule the way we would hold in a case like that, not being catastrophic while working in an emergency situation. If they didn't, it would ruin your organization because if you had this type of a responsibility for the life of somebody, and if they're a young person and their family, it would break you. I mean, it'd break the insurance. I, I will tell you, I'll have to check with our national office because I know, I mean, firefighters, hands down, are our love or sponsor, period. Without them, we'd be millions and millions and millions of dollars behind. So I know that my national office they put these insurance packages in place, and we insure the city as well. Um, and we do this every year for multiple cities that we work with. And I work with a fire department, and we, they have insurance for a reason. So I'll have to see, you know. I can tell you when I go to the mayor's conference in a couple of weeks, one of the biggest topic the mayor's constantly are talking about is the catastrophic insurance and, and how it's affected cities. And, and, and we're constantly still battling those interpretations, and it's. It's a court thing, and, and the interpretation is is, is very uh, extremely liberal. And I'm not saying I never want to, like I said, people who are hurt in the line of duty like John Gruff, they, they deserve everything they can possibly have gotten. But there are cases where people are back to other jobs, working, they're at the playing golf every day, they're at the racket. I'm not saying here in Belleville, but I'm just saying cases where the mayors have cited and it's a situation where some of the interpretations in some of the court cases have been extremely, um, what I think other mayors and myself would say probably haven't been fair, and, and, and the cities have taken really a very um, a tough go on some of this. So we, we've got to continue to watch out for the taxpayers and, and make sure that these situations are, and, and they're not, I wish, if they were as clear cut as you said, I would have a different feeling about this, but we've seen some pretty, we've seen some pretty extreme cases. Um, I am hearing NBA and the city will look again at the policies and the laws surrounding them to see if there's perhaps something new that may change the way you feel about that. Beyond that, a few minutes ago, what I thought I heard you say was not having the language that you put in place earlier in front of you today, you weren't certain whether you prohibited the use of all equipment during this fundraiser in totality, or whether you left some room Chief, for you have a, I, don't, I, don't have, I don't have it for me. So if the language did say, in totality, you can't ever use it for any reason, are you indicating that you're willing to consider revising that statement so that perhaps okay. they can do it in the Walmart? I think the totality was in intersections. I don't think Walmart, we allowed Walmart for several years, right? After this thing first went down and we changed our, our, changed our policy. We did Walmart, right, Fred? Yes, sir. 
I mean, yeah, you were probably a thousand or two thousand dollars shy of what your goals were in previous years, right? Uh, we actually had uh, Walmart has cut back on their, their ability to actually sit in front of their and do collections as well. So uh, the, the, the passage of the governor's act allowed us to get into intersections again, whether, like I said, whether we're on duty or whether we're off duty. It allowed us that avenue to at least collect and, and be covered through the NBA, the NBA blanket over us. Uh, but it, Walmart and other places don't allow charitable collections. Uh, Walmart does, but some places don't allow charitable uh, collections in front of them. It's a standard policy, uh, and it's very hard to get things in front of Walmart anymore. So that, that to us is basically another loss in a place where we can stand for it. Okay. Anything else in the new business? Uh, motor fuel claims in the amount of 51,634.58. Motion by Alderman Seibert. Do I hear a second by Alderman Martinson? Do I hear discussion? Roll call. Heisler. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Holt. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Hall. Aye. 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 Motion carries. This time I'd ask for a motion for an executive session to discuss personnel, contract negotiation, litigation. I don't think we have any contract negotiation tonight, but for all those causes. Your motion. Motion by Alderman Meyer, second. Second. Second by Alderman Heister. All in favor of going to executive session, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. For the Halloween, we still like to help. Volunteers, candy, hot dogs. It's coming out the end of the month. We'll be here before we know it.